And so the sun comes out for our next very important moment. SFU's honorary degree is the highest honor that is conferred by this university. Honorary degrees are awarded to distinguished individuals in recognition of their scholarly, scientific, or artistic achievement, or in recognition of exceptional contribution to the public good through professional or philanthropic activity. Honorary degree recipients' achievements celebrate our university's values, and they serve as an inspiration and a role model to our students, graduates, and our community. The honorary degree will now be conferred. To present the honorary degree candidate, Mr. Barry Downs, I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Rick Gruneau. Dr. Gruneau is professor in the School of Communication. Dr. Gruneau. Thank you, Madam Chancellor. Madam Chancellor, while British Columbia is known for its natural beauty, the livability of our built environment is also an important contributor to the quality of life in the province. For this reason, I'm honored today to introduce Barry Downs, one of BC's most significant 20th century architects. Barry Downs has practiced architecture for more than five decades. After several years working in prominent Vancouver architectural firms, he formed Downs Archambault Architects in 1969. The firm became award-winning pioneers in an emerging West Coast modernist style of residential design. And other early projects included North Vancouver Civic Center, the Sedgwick Building at the University of Victoria, and the Lester B. Pearson College of the Pacific. Barry Downs and his colleagues later led the design of hotels and multi-residential structures at Whistler and Victoria. He was also a design partner for two Kwantlen universities, the Campbell River Museum and Concord Pacific's award-winning waterworks at Beatty Muse, among other projects. The philosophy developed at Downs Archambault strongly aligned with progressive civic ideas that were beginning or becoming prominent in Vancouver during the 1970s, a strong sense of civic participation, the involvement of end users in the planning process, a focus on community, realization of the importance of harmonizing the built environment with nature, and recognition of the importance of civic heritage. Barry Downs developed a close relationship with city planners and became a member of Vancouver's design panel and early heritage preservation committees. Under his direction, the 1903 Carnegie Library was retrofitted as a downtown east side community center, for example. Mr. Downs also played a major collaborative role in the establishment of new Vancouver communities at Champlain Heights, False Creek South, False Creek North Expo Lands, and, the, and at International Village. In 1979 and 1981, Downs Archambault completed the classroom and museum block and the Diamond Alumni Center at SFU, and later in a joint venture with other Canadian architects, played distinctive roles in the development of several of Vancouver's current civic icons, including Canada Place, Pan Pacific Hotel, and Library Square. It's hard to go anywhere in this city without seeing the footprint of Barry Downs. In addition to these accomplishments, through his contributions to a series of award-winning books on topics ranging from the architecture of British Columbia churches to modernist architectural photography, Barry Downs has emerged as one of the most reflective architects of his generation. Madam Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I ask that you now confer upon Barry Downs the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Barry Downs, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Dr. Downs will be hooded by Dr. John Driver, Vice President Academic, and by Dr. Kate Ross, Registrar.
take your hat off and face the front. Excellent. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Speaking this. Thanks, Rick. It is with pleasure that I now call on Dr. Barry Downs for his convocation address. Dr. Downs. Thank you very much. Madam Chancellor, President Petter, members of the Board of Governors, and Senate faculty members, honored guests, and especially graduates of the Reedy School of Business, um, and their families, their dear families and friends, who would be very proud at this moment. I thank you for this very special honor and recognition today. I would also like to acknowledge my family, uh, who have been uh, so supportive for me over these years, and my good friend, uh, Professor of Communications, Richard Grinnell, for his generous introduction. It's for an architect, it's, it's exhilarating to be here on a day like this when the sun comes through and, um, it, and it's so effective, I think, uh, for all of us. It's a privilege to offer a few thoughts at this celebration a reminder of my own good fortune uh, growing up and graduating in a much simpler wor world of propeller-driven airplanes, black and white television sets, and typewriters, no computers or cell phones to be seen. Born and schooled in Vancouver, I graduated uh, in architecture at the University of Washington. While there, the influences of the iconic American architects Frank Lloyd Wright and Richard Neutra on my education were profound. They informed my work to this day. Working with Thompson Burke and Pratt Architects in the 1950s, the busiest firm in the city, uh, teaching with fellow architects, Arthur Erickson and Bud Wood at UBC, and forming a brief business practice with Fred Hollingsworth, served me well over my first 15 years. But in the late 1960s, when the countercultural movement took hold, I discovered that architectural life had less to do with the design of small modernist houses and more to do with the ongoing loss of historic buildings and neighborhoods and the need to address the human condition in our then stagnant city and suburbs. My heroes changed when a group of UBC professors and other determined advocates for change got together with, with successful businessman and investment fund ent entrepreneur Arthur Phillips to form TEAM, the Electors Action Movement. In 1968, indeed, a new civic political party was born. By 1974, they gained control of the city of uh, Vancouver's council and champ championed a remarkable visionary process of land use renewal, social equality, heritage building preservation, planning of small scale housing enclaves, people friendly neighborhoods, and livable green communities began in earnest. In these endeavors, 
participatory planning govern as city supported developments were assessed by local area citizen groups in concert with architects, planners, economists, and engineers. Policy then was decided by consensus. Subsequent mayors of the city, Jack Vorich, Mike Harcourt, and Gordon Campbell, upheld many of the significant objectives achieved in this time period. A decade later, more challenging conditions were faced. New urban design criteria for highly densified neighborhoods were determined for the north side of False Creek, the 205 acres of Expo lands, the downtown core, and Coal Harbor developments. Market-driven fewer projects addressed non-market family housing on site, and many of the residential tower units were rented out by absentee owners. Indeed, inflated land and building costs encouraged housing to be built as a commodity instead of as a privilege. However, the provision of primary schools, lively streets, sufficient garden settings, linear parks did animate most urban neighborhoods as demographics and tenures evolved. Disappointingly, downtown east side remained a work remained a work in progress with unknown results ahead. Today, as graduates of the Beatty School of Business from this splendid university, you will determine the urban business and domestic environments of the future. New challenges await. Your energetic and creative input and unique information managing skills. You will need to encourage your governments, builders, and bureaucrats to mandate the environmental quality of work workplace and home. It should be a central objective of all new metro development initiatives. You indeed are the new environmentalists. Innovative new housing solutions must be generated in order to provide a more affordable product this would include building renewal, not demolition, sensitive renovation within the suburbs, creating duplex units and laneway houses, as well as allowing secondary suites. In these projects, entrepreneurship should embrace social sustainability and recognize that with resolve, a mix of income, housing types, and age groups can be accommodated and balanced neighborhoods. Research preservationists today believe that high density development in single family communities should be provided in small doses. Small footprint cluster housing, free fee sample row houses as found in Boston, London, San Francisco, and townhouse surrounded mid-rise tower complexes are viable housing alternatives. High-rise high towers need not be everywhere. The tower-only sustainability argument can challenge our quality of life, life standards. Your business acumen will allow you to question all new development trends and determine the impact of gentrification and dislocation. Of course, sustainable accountability will be central to your decision-making and those are the organizations you work with. You can influence them. Increasingly, green policies are seen as good business, yet the degree of implementation will be measured against cost factors. Ongoing tensions and change will require well-reasoned responses. These possibilities for high-quality, eco-friendly environments and affordable housing are about are but a few which can be achieved today. Indeed, humane living environments, compelling public spaces, and stimulating economies are at this time more necessary than ever. As realized in the past, we know your vision and learned contribution will make a difference and forever 
enrich the lives of others. Good luck, graduates, and success in all that you do in your future endeavors. Thank you.